Pretty sick painting, huh, dude? That's the Matisse, bro. Mad, nasty, impressionist. Look at those brush strokes. Sick. Mm hmm Nasty. Yo, you know what I mean when I say, like, impressionism? Like, he doesn't just do a painting, he does, like, a whole impression of it with, like, the colors and shit. Yeah, I got it. Yo, but if you like those who do impressions, you should check out Vinnie Van Gogh. Yo, he paints fruit like mad wavy and shit, and he's got his own vodka brand. Dude is like the fucking Derek Jeter of Impressionism. Sickest painting squad all time, the Cubanist by far. You know how sometimes you see a girl from the front and you'll be like, doom, and then you see it from the back and you're like, doom. Picasso's like, fuck it, dude. I'm gonna paint them both at the same time. They paint the brightest colors, the thickest lines, the most titties. You know what it should be, though? Michael Jordan is like the Picasso of basketball. I carved my girl's initials in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Bro, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, bro? Bro. What is art? What is not? What is beauty? What is what? I am far, I am near, I am there, I am here to discover what is art and reveal what is far. Now that we have done this part, time's a wasting, so let's start. <laughs> Okay, so this is art. I gotta admit guys, I don't always get art. Sometimes I'm looking at a bizarre sculpture or an installation and I think, is somebody fucking with me? And I feel like I should know better because I was raised in an artsy household and I myself am something of an artist. Okay, silly internet video maker guy. But still, at this point in my life, I really should know the difference between a true masterpiece and a steaming pile of horse caca. So I'm gonna seek some knowledge from some experts in the fine arts to help me recognize when I'm looking at true genius and when I'm being sold the emperor's new clothes. So now let's go talk to a bona fide artist whose finest creation stands before you now. It's my dad. He made me with his penis. He's, he's ready to fire. Yeah. He's, just, he's, he's just sizing up the situation. Yeah. And see if Goliath is, yeah. is, is close enough to nail his ass. What's going on with the, the pee? The, well, the I mean, pee Dave, situation. David was Jewish and he was circumcised. And uh, this guy's this guy's not. So, uh, yeah. yeah, they revised uh, the history. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody meet Tom Williams, or Dada, as I've come to know him. He's a pretty damn good sculptor. And overall, he's a pretty radtastic dude. So when he asked me if I wanted to visit him in Italy last fall to watch him sculpt and learn about some dope art stuff, I was like, uh, does the Sistine Chapel have paint on the ceiling? I later found that it does. It, it does have paint. So let's talk about your biggest man crush, Michelangelo. Why do you love him so much? He took it to another level. Now everybody knows him for his sculpture, but his basis of, of doing frescoes really assisted him when he's doing the uh, Sistine Chapel. And yeah, I guess he's kind of like the Bo Jackson of art, right? Yeah. You know, baseball and football. Yeah, that, there you go, N nice analogy. Thank you, I have like a million of them. Dad has the distinguished honor of sculpting in Carrara, a famous marble quarry where Michelangelo, Donatello, and other famous Ninja Turtles would go to mine and sculpt their sacred marble. Cowabunga. This is the traditional manner of carving that Michelangelo used. This is what everybody uses now. It hits that piece of stone like a thousand times a minute as opposed to Michelangelo's 15. So if Michelangelo had the robo chisel, he could carve like boogers and nose hair and like earwax. Yeah. Cool. How many blocks of marble is this? One. Suffice to say, Dad is pretty smitten on Magic Mike. But how does he feel about more modern conceptual sculptors? I don't think that if this sculpture was like this big that that it could hold your interest. This has dropped out of any concern of being art. Not my favorite. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> How can you spot the difference between good art and like bull poo poo? To people who are doing conceptual or installation or work that does not require any skill, it may come, uh, be very creative, uh, but if your audience doesn't get it, I wonder its value. Last time you and I were at the, the New Whitney, we walked by a pipe that was leaning against a wall and it was uh, a sculpture. They fully validate and we both look at it and it's just a pipe leaning against a wall. Could be a broom, it could be anything. Yeah, but what you need is that placard because if you don't have the placard, then it's not art. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's an art. So this is an art. This does kind of play with ready-made, yeah. What is a ready-made again? Uh, a ready-made is an idea from an artist named Marcel Duchamp. Okay. And he's saying that pretty much anything is art, so he'd have a broom. Right. And he'd say, this is art. He'd lean it against the corner and say, that's art. You can like take all kinds of shit that you leave around the house, and that can be an art, according to Duchamp. Am I saying that right? Duchamp. Marcel Duchamp. Well, now I know what a ready-made is, thanks to Stephanie Marie. She's an art scholar that's been generous enough to show me around this soups hipster chic hood in Brooklyn called Bushwick. Back in the day, Bushwick was pretty damn rough, but now it's fast becoming the place for emerging artists of New York to make and show their work. Kind of like a modern day Florence, right, Pops? I think that probably the shittiest neighborhood in Florence would be a whole lot nicer than that place. Okay, so you don't want to go to Bushwick with us? No. So this is a gallery in Bushwick, what is it called? Uh, art Helix. This is the Art Helix Gallery. And there are just things like this all around Bushwick. You just go into like a seedy warehouse and all of a sudden there's there's modern artwork all around you. Yeah, it's kind of the, that's the story. Usually it's a lot cheaper. You don't need to buy furniture to have an art gallery and you can just put up walls. And the art is cheaper. No. Okay. <laughs> we shouldn't touch art. Sawi. So here you have Mount tape down. on the wall, a yeah. shirt on the ground, and tape on the ground. And crumpled tape. So it's like a crime scene, and you have to and piece it, together how the art happened. That's actually not a bad assessment. We're like the Sherlock Holmes of this art piece. You get, yeah, you, you get a point for that one. Looks like this art may have been free. What I'm looking at here, it looks like um, there was some construction nearby. And they like scooped it up and like um, put it here. I think we're gonna need a bigger placard to explain this one. Imagine Perret, he's standing in the street in a small town somewhere in France. It's summer and it's noon. And fuck you, the priest turns to a Perret, click. I feel like this art is elitist because it requires you to be able to read. It's not that long. It's really it's long, like I read five. very slow. Yeah. And there are no pictures. To people who require a whole wall of explanation, just write a book. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody walks in there and doesn't get it, I think that the museum has failed. Is the process here similar to sculpting at all? Well, it's, in terms of making stuff, yeah, from scratch, it's very similar. Uh, the, only, the major difference is, is that I don't get to eat uh, the sculpture. So you cook also. It seems harder to pass off like a shitty meal than like a bad piece of art because you actually have to like eat the shit. But the, the thing about, about taste buds is, is that they get, you're eating something that's, you know, that is horrible, they'll spit it out. It'd be nice if the art world was as clear cut as that. Yeah, like you couldn't have like a concept art restaurant where they serve like garbage because people probably wouldn't go for it. And that's why the fine arts is such a perplexing thing, is because there are no taste buds necessarily. It's like Coltrane's saxophone, except it's not about the notes he doesn't play, it's about the ingredients he shouldn't use. Una banana. Because they're not necessarily food. Una vez, por ejemplo, se me cayó el estropajo dentro de los espaguetis. There are no English words to describe what he's doing, only French words like incroyable, magnifique, déprédu. Okay, so sticking with the food analogy, if we were to serve a Michelangelo sculpture as a dish, what would that be? Like a porterhouse steak? Or... <laughs> well, it would, it would be, yeah, it would be very uh, satiating. What would the Jackson Pollock dish be? Oh, it would just be slop. It would be the garbage can. <laughs> yes, we are referring to Jackson Pollock, the abstract expressionist made famous with a little help from patron Peggy Guggenheim for his unique style of dripping paint onto canvas, which is really not dad's thing to say the least. I don't think that anybody would have known him if he was not befriended by um, uh, Peggy Guggenheim. Ah, so that's like a classic Emperor New Clothes situation. And, and the, the best person that, that, that that called him out on that is Norman Rockwell. He has a painting where two people are, you just see their backs and, and they're looking at a, a Jackson Pollock painting. And you see the skill 
that Rockwell has, and you see what they're looking at, and it basically says everything about the difference between skill and bullshit. Yes, yeah. Oh, so he was like throwing shade at Pollock. That's so gangster. Yeah. Like Tupac and Biggie shit. She's doing a parody on uh, Marina Abramovic, a famous performance artist from the 70s. Recently, like maybe five, six years ago at MoMA, where she sat in a normal chair. So she's sort of talking shit about Maria Abramovic. Being Literally able to sit. talking shit. Yeah, yeah. Or sitting. Or doing, I don't know. There's a pun there to be made that I'm not making. I think you made it. All right, it's, good. It's, it's a parody because um, I'm making fun of the hypocrisy of the art world. I'm you should tweet this at her. I'm not interested in no? doing that. You can I start like a total She's babble. She's a symbol. Yeah. She's a symbol of what is wrong with the art world. If you could summarize how, what you feel is wrong with the art world, what would you say? I think that what sells is not, um, any, is not necessarily what's going to really move the culture forward or yeah. make a real statement. It's just stuff that's easy to digest. For the people who want to make money on art, they have to hype something. And some people that they hype are great, great works, great, great artists. And some are just, you know, just convenient. So what did we learn? Anything? Did you? Did I? Let's see. I learned that some people judge a work of art based on the skill of the craftsman, and others are more concerned by the implications of a piece, no matter how minimal. I learned that some people believe that anything can be art if you put it in the right context, and others think that art shouldn't have to be explained. And sometimes artists like to call it these perceived hypocrisies in their own art. Hmm, art that pokes fun at the art world itself. Interesting idea.